What is up guys, it's me Hazonic, and I'm here with a game I've been so excited for for quite some time now. So, a little bit of backstory, I played the original Suzerain three years ago and absolutely loved it. It had that perfect mixture of visual novel and interesting story with almost like a political sim of you controlling the nation of Swordland. DLC released yesterday as of recording this and it's the Kingdom of Regia, which I literally know nothing about. All I know is it's just another uh, nation country on the map uh, or the continent that we played on previously. I'm not sure if anyone else has done any playthroughs yet or if I'm one of the only channels covering it, but I love this game and I hope we get some recognition. So if you're watching the style of the video, it's going to be quite simple. You're going to be playing along with me. There's not going to be any cuts or anything like that. It's literally, I'll be reading out uh, the narrative. Uh, I'll be showing you my decisions. If you are uninterested, it's probably best you click away now, but if you do want to experience the whole game, but maybe you can't afford it or you want to watch someone else and see how they played compared to you, then this is the perfect, uh, perfect place to watch it. So without further ado, let's get on with the game and get our Kingdom of Regia playthrough started. So here we are on the map and I'm not sure if you need to have played or heard about the original game to have any idea for it to link into the Kingdom of Regia, but I'm going to give a, give a rundown. You played as Anton Rain, who was elected as president of the new nation of Swordland and the game had many, many options of how you'd lead the country, what events could happen. For example, um, what's it called? Rumberg up here could invade you, you could have trade disputes, there could be internal war, all sorts of things. My playthrough ended with my guy retiring as a football manager um, or football owner and the country was very strong. I don't know how we're going to go with Kingdom of Regia. Um, but we can see here, yes, yeah, I didn't 1954. We've got in recession, 37 million people. If you look at Kingdom of Regia here, 40 million people. So even though it's much, much, much smaller, it's got more people. And we start four years earlier with um, a place that doesn't seem to be in terror. Everyone said the economy was in recession. This place is different. Gas, gold, and wine, and we're a king instead of a president. So, King Romus Taurus has ascended to the throne. His reign begins under ge geopolitical strife, contention between royal houses, and demands for the reclamation of lost lands. So there could be some wars here, guys. This could be a real, um, a real fun one. So, let's start. Um, you haven't finished the main story. That is because I played it on a different computer. Um, Oh, okay. So I can do see we we'll automatically generate a, a default save file and finish the main story. I think we're just gonna have to go for it. Um, like I said, I played this on my laptop. Um, it's the same Steam account, but it obviously hasn't transferred over. So um, I'm hoping that the uh, the auto generated one isn't a terrible. It's not. It doesn't just give me like the worst case scenario. It gives me an average scenario. But then it also at least puts me more in line with um, you know, maybe what play for you guys. Add, or if you haven't played this game before, it's a nice neutral starting point. Okay, so just like with the main storyline, uh, story uh, where we're playing uh, as Anton Rain, we get to choose some options of our character, which do actually have an effect. It's not just uh, for fun, like they actually do have a significant effect on different events based on your personality type or how you were raised. So, 1905, Kingdom of Regia. You open your eyes to this realm. Becoming a king was never your choice. It was, I think, your burden. I, I, I don't want to play this like awfully cocky and arrogant king. I want to play someone in the middle. Um, so I don't want to play too, anything too crazy. From a young age, you knew you were no ordinary child. You were Romus Taurus, grandson of Queen Liza, ruler of all of Regia, son of Crown Prince Valero, the Duke of Valenciris. For most of the year, you live with your father, Valero, and your mother, Estella, in a lavish palace atop the cliffs of Monkis. Each summer, though, you... So, stay with the queen, visit your mother, mother's common-born family. Okay, so again, we can choose a more... I don't want to say loving or um, humble king, but there are options like that. Went hunting with your father's brother, Hugo, in the forest. I think, yeah, I think this one is what I'll, what I'll pick. Like I said, somewhere in the middle. Your uncle taught you more than just how to hold and aim a gun. You learned the value of staying patient and keeping your eyes and ears open at all times. Every autumn, you returned home a little wiser. Yeah, I think, I think that's the one. 1918. When, Cle when Queen Liza died, the whole country grieved, but the mourning could only last for so long. There was a new king to crown. You remember two things about King Valero's coronation. The whisper that Hugo, now the Duke of Valenciris, was actually the rightful king, and the shouts of protesters outside the palace gates. Along with your father, after the ceremony, you... 
Hmm, I think... Ask him about the protest, yeah. Sort of like a, a curious king, but don't want to press into more personal matters. Your father laughed and told you that some people had to believe Regia shouldn't be ruled by a monarch anymore. But of course, he assured you they were wrong. Hmm... This, I think, is a big split of whether we are, like, again, a very arrogant royal or more of a one for the people. I'm going to say in between, like I said before, but I think we had our doubts. Not saying that necessarily there shouldn't be a royalty or a monarchy, but a little bit of doubt. Life in Porta Drazon was less exciting than you expected. You were tutored privately and rarely had contact with non-royals. At the palace, the closest person to your age was uh, Pable, son of the palace groundskeeper. The groundskeeper's son, a quiet but friendly kid who knew about every plant in the palace gardens. You... I think quickly became close friends. 1923. When you came of age, your father invited you to, this, to start sitting in on royal council meetings. You decided... I think, yeah, that we love to join. Um, I think I think that's the, the perfect one for the sort of character I'm trying to go for. The council members took you under their wing, catching you up on issues of the day. One of the main concerns was uh, Palers, or Pales, the peninsula to, to Regia's south, formerly part of the kingdom, um, that had belonged to the Empire of Valgos, the historical empire comprising modern-day uh, Volksland and its many colonies. Now that the empire had fallen, war councillor General Tadius Azaro so one of the three noble houses, was launching a military campaign to take the newly independent region back. You agree that it was time to recall. Oh, this again is, this is a split. Thought a lost cause. Hmm. I think with our background of us hunting and sort of wanting to be a part of the, the counts, we would have strong opinions. I don't want to go if I just didn't have an opinion. And I'm going to say, yeah, a bit of a, the shooting, I'm going to say a little bit, <laughs> reconquer the territory. I had no wars in my main uh, uh, Swordland playthrough, so having a war here would be pretty interesting. 1925, war and uncertainty. As you continued to serve on the council, the campaign in Palace dragged on. It seemed like an easy victory until your northern neighbour, Lesbia, got involved, sending weapons and financial aid. Protest against the war sprouted up around the country. You... Oh, again, I don't want to be sort of in the middle. I want to have a strong opinion. I want to be in the middle in terms of not an arrogant person or not like a, a complete for the people, but I don't want to be in the minute in the middle on opinions. Ask your father to stop the bloodshed. Begged him to crack down on the traitors. <laughs> this is brilliant. Hmm. So oh, let me just read this again. It seemed like an easy victory into your northern neighbours. So yeah, winning, but then a, a big neighbor started uh, supporting them. Mm. Of course, it's just been a hard one, guys. I'm just thinking because Lesbia, from reading about them, and I remember them from my main playthrough, they're very, very wealthy. So it's not like they're a very small nation sponsoring. And if, if the war got really bad, they might physically step in as well. Um, but at the same time, I feel like getting over it. So I'm going to go for big teams to crack down on the traitors, which is maybe quite controversial. Let's go for that option. 1926, a few arrests were made, but the fire had been lit. Your next council meeting was interrupted by the announcement that the Navy had mutinied. Bloody clashes between pro and anti-monarchists were erupting across the country. The century of revolutions had reached Regia at last. Oh my goodness, 1926. The head of, of palace security insisted you be driven to a safe house outside of Port de Drazon, the capital. As you, as you left city limits, though, an unmarked car swerved in front of you, blocking the road. A trio of masked men with guns jumped out, quickly overpowered your guards, and forced you out of the vehicle. Oh gosh, I'm not sure what it means by yellow. I'm oh, sorry, that's because the one I was highlighting. <laughs> I thought it was uh, maybe thinking that it was like the, the main one I have to pick. I'm going to say I tried to fight them. I'm assuming my character can't die in this character creation, uh, so I'm going to say I tried to fight them. Your captors subdued you after only the slightest struggle. You recognise one of their voices, Lucas Sazon, one of Regis' three noble houses. Mm, okay, Duke of Brinus and the head of Regis' third royal house. A hood went over your head, then darkness. They held you captive for nearly a week. When rescue finally came, it was in the form of a man with a white, blue and uh, magenta flag on his fatigues. Welland's flag. Alice, you pieced together what happened. In desperation, your father had pleaded for, for the aid of a neighbouring country, Wellen, Regia's northwestern neighbour, to neutralise the uprising. But their help came at a price, and agreements signed by both countries transferred ownership of the port of Zille. 
uh, and its surrounding region to Velen for the next 25 years. Yeah, I think that's a very, very bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I will wonder why that was just so stupid. The uprising had other consequences. The traitor, Lucas Azan, was executed and his pregnant wife was sent into exile. As further punishment, Isa, capital city of Brainus, home to Regis Lardus University, uh, ancestral home was handed over to your family. Your uncle Hugo, your uncle, thanks, was sent to serve as its steward and you were to take his place as reigning Duke of Valencurius, your home province. Your childhood home in one keys. Um, you focus on finding and punishing the remaining traitors to the throne. No, I'm not going to be that authoritarian, I don't think. Um, yeah, did your best help your region rebuild. I think that's the uh, the one to go for. My guys, he, he wants the country to do well, so we will hunt down traitors. But I don't think he'd be that obsessed with like crushing any uprising or anything like that. Um, 1930. Belinkiris came to see you as a, as a generous, capable leader. One day, the king came for an unannounced visit. He brought with him a pale-skinned young woman with striking blue eyes. Hesitantly, she introduced herself as Lena Livingston, the sister of Queen Beatrice of Rumberg, and your wife-to-be, the queen of the sister of Queen Beatrice. My goodness, Rumberg is a very powerful nation in the north. Um, you demand to know what's going on. I think, yeah, bowing, it's sort of, again, quite neutral. Kissing her hand is a bit, <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit too, bit too uh, straight to the point. Let, let, let's bow. King Valera told you that he had no choice. With Velen uh, descending into civil war, Regia needed a new ally. A partnership with the Kingdom of Rumberg, cemented with an, an arranged marriage, was in the best interest of both monarchies. Besides, he added, you would surely grow to love her. Uh, this, uh, this one, again, I'm quite split. Like, not as my character as me, but I think he's more right than wrong, um, especially for the, for the good of the nation. You and Lena uh, began uh, having long conversations about your royal upbringings, hopes and dreams. By the time you lifted her veil, you knew it was true love. Oh, okay, I thought I was going to say, by the time you lifted her veil, she was ugly as hell. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the years after your wedding and the birth of your daughter, Vina, were the happiest of your life. The only trouble was... Um, okay, these are, these are quite personal. Um, you couldn't stop yourself. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um... Oh, so definitely not this one. This one is, it would be a really fun playthrough to pick like all the most controversial or just downright wrong options. So big in this one is, so maybe I should come back to this game and never play through and do that. But I'm thinking between these ones. And again, my guy's sort of in the middle, but I do think he leans more towards being just and good. So I don't think being a husband and father distract you from your royal obligations. I think that's a little bit too, um, again, a bit authoritarian. Um, I'm going to go with option one. 1933. With Rumberg's help, Regis' economy bounced back to levels it hadn't seen since the glory days of Queen Liza. Wealthy Rumbergians started moving to the cities, so did economic migrants from neighbouring Morella and Andardia. And Vezex seeking asylum from the civil war, you... Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think... I think too... A little bit too strong. Um... I'm gonna think celebrated, because again, more people in a time where we lots of strife. It's more people working, working for my monarchy. <laughs> so, many of the foreigners ended up in the province of Brennus, where a nationalist movement called Suomenina Su Omina began demanding that the king put Regia above all. As Duke of Isa, your uncle Hugo turned a blind eye to Suomenina's activities, while his teenage son, Ricardus, became a vocal supporter. Eventually, Ricardus, better known as Ryko, approach you about speaking at one of the group's rallies. Hmm. So this is again like pro-nationalism movement. Oh, this is where it's tough. Oh, we're gonna have a big plot in this, aren't we? About like how the country's got a massive nationalist movement and stuff. Oh gosh. Um, I said that I wouldn't, I'm just gonna try and keep in the middle between the authoritarian and, and not, but I think this one is, it's not giving me any choice. I have to take a side. Do you want to go for an authoritarian leader? Or... Well, this is more nationalist. It's not... Oh, gosh. These decisions, are... I always find them so difficult, gentlemen. So what my opinion is on this. Is if I agree, I'm obviously going to have a lot of hatred uh, from migrants who then might form their own uprising. But obviously, I'm getting rich allies on side in the form of the other dukes. But if I refuse... I then might be friendly with 
um, a lot of the population, potentially. But I definitely have some enemies in the form of the other Dukes who then might be trying to overthrow me. It's a difficult one. Oh, gosh. This took me about a few minutes actually to think about all the options, but I think I'm going to refuse. The reasoning is because while we have a, a powerful enemy, or not, maybe not enemy, but at least someone who's very against us uh, in the form of probably Hugo, but more importantly, his son, who probably become the Duke quite soon. Um, I do think they'll potentially be easier to control than the country becoming quite nationalist. And then the civil war breaks out as the, the, uh, the, the extreme nationalists maybe try and take control I think it's the long term refusing is better about tricky one guys. You distanced yourself from the organization and from Raiko. Your uncle was displeased, but said nothing. A few years passed. 1942. You suddenly realized that the uprising had broken something in your father. He began neglecting his duties as he became both increasingly preoccupied with threats, both real and imaginary. Outside of the country, he gained a new nickname, Valero the Frail. Oh gosh. You found yourself under more and more pressure to make up for your father's shortcomings. Lena was patient and understanding, one of the many things you loved about her. For her 10th birthday, Vina asked to go on a sailing trip with the two of you. You, I'm going to say happily come along. I think a family man's quite important when, when you've got all the uh, all the pressures of all of that. In the middle of the Gulf of Alankiris, the weather turned unexpectedly stormy. When the captain tried to turn the boat around, it was hit by a breaking wave and cracked in half. Oh my gosh. The Coast Guard got uh, to you and your daughter on time, but the time, by the time they pulled Lena out, she was barely breathing. They rushed her to hospital. She died holding her hand. Oh my goodness, 1942. This is, this is quite a bit before we start, but only about eight years. You were devastated. After the funeral, your mother Estella came to visit and found you hardly able to function. She promptly moved in to help out with Vina. Hugo suggested your turn to... Uh, Rishesism, Regal's official religion to cope with your loss. Again, this is a, uh, this isn't as a major decision as the other. I don't think. Um, became less of a believer. No, I think, I think we will agree with that one. Meanwhile, the situation in the capital worsened. Re uh, region uh, nationalists continued to process protest the loss of Zile, the region at region's nor uh, north, northern tip, and the country in increasing diversity. Rumours spread that an anti-monarchist movement was beginning to grow once more. Your father called Hugo back to the capital to keep an eye on his council. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. I don't think number two is particularly strongly. Hmm. I'm going to say... You began to get suspicious as well, because I think the Duke, Hugo, secretly wants to become the king. And so he, he may be trying to... Like, behind the scenes, uh, not running this organization, but definitely supporting them. So I'm going to get a bit suspicious. Outsiders also took notice of the king's decline. One of them was Axel Reinhardt, Grand Duke of Palace, the new ruler of the Grand Duchy of uh, Palace. He sent you an invitation to visit him on two conditions. You would go alone and without your father's knowledge. Oh gosh, this is, um, this is an interesting one. I'm going to say yes, because, um, my character isn't too happy with how things are being run with the decline of the monarchy. So maybe he thinks that these people can uh, can offer him some sort of deal or whatever. Or he might just get assassinated. <laughs> Who knows? It was your first time in palace since childhood. You were surprised at how modern everything seemed now. Duke Reinhardt welcomed you to his palace. He said he was hoping to re-establish relations with Risha when she became king. You told him that would only be possible once palace rejoined Risha. Okay. Very uh, nationalist there. Said you were looking forward to putting the past behind you. Agreed that a thaw between Raja and Palace could be lucrative on both sides. Hmm. I'm not sure. This is going to... Well, I just don't know. I've, uh, it's hard being in the middle. Because if you're going for a full authoritarian playthrough, it's easy. We join the nationalists. We try to take over all these countries that were once part of the empire. Or we do the opposite. Go for a full, diverse... Um, playthrough where we want to be the best and you know, like make friends with everybody but being in the middle just trying to balance sides oof. so i'm i think we are going to be more centered about growth than war um because obviously if we go to war but we've got all our, our own internal strife happening with a nationalist trying to rise up to take us on putting all our resources into a war which is then getting supported by big democratic nations to the north um I'm not sure that's very sensible. So, I'm, I'm going to go with number three. 
The Duke was satisfied with your answer. You spent the next few days getting to know him and the duchy better. Afterwards, oh, told your father about the trip. Lied to him where you'd been. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna lie because I feel the, the 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 father's already on his last leg. I think telling him that you've been to his enemy's um <laughs> his enemy's place would just kill him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to lie. Two days later, the king summoned you to the capital for a confrontation. He'd had his personal security force, the Golden Guard, surveil you in Palace. He accused you of betrayal and ordered you to tell him about your meeting with the Duke. Ooh. Uh, there's no point in not lying now. He's already caught me. I'm going to give him every last detail. You stayed close with your father in the months that followed, though you were both too busy to see each other often as you would have liked. As Vina grew into an intelligent, self-reliant young woman, your mother moved back to the capital. She called you one night, her voice shaking. The king was dying. He'd gone straight to bed after dinner. When your mother went to check on him later, she found, found him comatose in the bedroom. The doctor suspected a heart attack. You rushed to see him. Your father looked pale as a ghost. It took all his effort to speak. In a hoarse whisper, he warned you not to follow in his footsteps. Your reign would be a fresh start for House Tauras. A new chance to take back the lands that were lost. He closed his eyes. Oh my goodness. Only after the funeral gathered funeral gathered at the palace with your mother and daughter did the realization begin to dawn on you. From the day you were born, your entire life had been leading to this moment. Now it was finally here. 1949. We've done the Regia Prologue. Chapter one. King Romus. Oh my goodness, guys. Do we actually we can actually customize our guy? Um Oh, can we? Crown with no hair. Hmm, okay. There we go, guys. I have got my character, Romus Taurus, uh, customized. I really like him. He's got the, the classic gold background with his red royal attire, and he actually looks like one of the uh, Coldstream guards from Buckingham Palace, so that's why I think he looks pretty cool. And then facial hair, the regime, with a massive mustache and a little uh, chin action going on there, and then the professional haircut. I'm happy with that. I am ready. Are you sure about your customization choices? Because you can't change them, and of course I am. So, that has been a long time then. We've spent most of this video so far going through the prologue. So if you're still watching, then thanks a million for keeping up, and I hope you're as excited as I am, because now I'm very excited. So, strategic fo focus selection panel. As King Romus Taurus, you have extensive power to enact and shape the course of your nation. By choosing different focus options, you can improve the strategic direction of your country. So, government structure intention. Opting for absolutism would solidify mon uh, monarchic traditions, concentrating power and authority within House Tauras. Alternatively, considering reform alliance of House Sazon and the Regian People's Party, indicating a potential shift towards wider civic participation and perhaps nuanced resource redistribution. Conversely, adhering to the status quo seeks to uphold the pre prevailing balance of power and some provincial autonomy. I'm going to go with the status quo. Again, going quite in the middle, not going absolutism and adding even more sort of monarchy power, but not going for reform and changing too much. Just gonna keep things as they are for the moment, at least in, in, in the long run. So economic strategy, a focus on strengthening our resource economy emphasizes leveraging our natural assets, safeguarding our long-term energy commitments. Alternatively, efforts to diversify the economy away from sole reliance aim for a more balanced financial landscape, potentially mitigating risks associated with over-reliance. A mixed strategy, on the other hand, would give us more flexibility. Hmm. I think so. Sort of strengthen hmm, the natural assets. So we'd go even more into gold and gas and all of that. It's difficult again because strengthening could give us just a huge amount of money, but it's all about risk. If we went into a war and suddenly our, our you know our gas factories got bombed, our economy would. Just disintegrate but at the same time by focusing on that like gas and oil and gold all the thing we have a lot of we can make a lot of money to then put resources into other things like good road networks or trains or investing in military or whatever so i think strengthening the resources you could go for a mixed approach but i think even with stuff like this i don't think a mixed approach is, is enough i think you need to focus all your resources either in strengthening or diversifying so strengthening resources let's go foreign affairs 
third way appeasement or intervention, uh, interventionism. In the face of global tensions, Riza stands at a strategic nexus. Interventionism champions a proactive military stance. Appeasement fosters diplomacy with Velen and courts the monarchy of Rum Rumberg. Opting for the third way veers towards regional alliances, notably with Derdia, Palais, and Morella, sidestepping dominant power. So, interventionism is we're ready to strike, I think. Appeasement means we're trying to suck up to the big powers in the area. Definitely not one I want to do. Third way, though, I think is the one, it's between the third way and interventionism. Third way, we're, we're making ties with the small nations around us and trying to avoid the big nations. Interventionism, oh, I said to the guy, the Duke of Palace, didn't I, that we would make friends. So maybe I ignore him for the moment and then try to invade some other people. <laughs> Let's go for interventionism. Okay, as King Romus Taurus, uh, okay, so that's the same thing. Military branch focus. Shift to the region air force could position us for potential air superiority. By exploring advanced pilot training and considering an expansion of our bomber fleets, we might enhance our capacities for precision strikes and extend our bombing operational reach, aiming for a balanced control in our airspace. Region army. Oh, so region army is actually gonna cost us more and the region navy is the same. So, region army. Directing resources towards the region army could pave the way for enhanced ground operations, potentially introducing advanced armoured vehicles, artillery, and modern infantry equipment. Embracing these tactics and training mythologies might elevate our territorial defence potential, providing opportunities to ex uh, explore more strategic land campaigns. Or the navy. A suited tilt towards the region navy could underscore our maritime aspirations by evaluating the integration of advanced warships designed for naval bombardment and amphibious landing capabilities. We may set the stage for a strengthened naval presence and a broader influence in international waters. I think the navy, it's split between the navy and the army. Army is obviously important if you generally want to invade people, but I think the navy is more important for going for an economic stronghold where we have lots of power in the area. For example, if we're exporting a lot of gas, oil, and gold, having a strong navy means we can protect those ships. Having a strong navy means if there's anyone getting a bit saucy with us, we can roll our navy up to their up to their port, up to their capital city if it's on a on the coast or whatever, and uh, get them a bit uh, get them wet in their pants. Um, none. <laughs> okay, giving us more budget and definitely not going for none. I think region navy. It also has only one budget. But saying that, I th oh, we've got budget up here. Yes, we do. We've got we've got seven budget. I think Region Navy is would be the best one. But oh, the army's close. The army, oh, the army's close. Right, Region Navy finish. Are you sure about your decisions? Yes. So we're. I think we're finally in, guys. Angelic sounding voices of a boy's choir echo through the Great Hall of Palace Resna. Palace Resna is a seat of government for the Kingdom of Risha. Okay, continue. To most regions, this was the grandest room in the grandest building in the entire country. To me, it was just home. I remembered wandering between the mosaic tiled columns as a, bo a bored teenager, groofing off with Pabble in the upper gallery as my father met with foreign dignitaries. And of course, this was where I had married Lena. Lean forward in the Silica Aurica, the gold-plated wooden throne on which all monarchies of Riga were coronated. The hall before me was filled with nobles, politicians, business magnates, even movie stars. A television crew moved up and down the aisles, broadcasting the ceremony to the Regian public for the first time. My mother was sitting in, front, in the front row next to Uncle Hugo. Tradition dictated that in the absence of a king or queen consort, the seat next to me would be filled by the successor to the throne. Vina plucked at a stray thread in her gown. How are you feeling, father? Ready for the next chapter? Honestly, a little nervous. My feelings are none of your business, woman. Sure, stop fidgeting the cameras or all this. Um, ready for the next chapter? I think, yeah, going in strong. My daughter smiled. Me too. I wish mother was the one sitting here that, wow. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant like instead of me. I was like, what the hell? That's a bit, a bit intense. The final notes of the coronation were him. By his sword I live, rang out. An expectant silence filled the hall. It was broken by the sound of shuffling footsteps. The cameras followed. Grand Wiseman Salignatius. What the hell is this? Oh, it's the, um, high priest. Okay. As he walked slowly down the central aisle, bearing a velvet cushion. He presented it in front of me. On it was a Taurus crown, a black onyx orb, and a scroll containing the words, the royal oath. Take the orb, look at the crown. I think recite the oath first. I took the scroll off the cushion and read aloud from it. I hereby pledge myself. 
the, uh, in service to the great nation of Risha and its people. I promise to guide my country with a steadfast hand. To uphold the laws of this land under Saint Ruick's watchful eye. To wield the sword of justice and the shield of mercy in equal measure. All this shall I do until the day I die. Take the orb. Litter the orb off the cushion and ran my fingers across its smooth surface. It was inlaid with a tree of diamonds representing the three royal houses of Risha, Taurus, Azaro and Sazon. Look at the crown. I gaze at the Taurus crown forged when my family took the throne 150 years ago. It was made of pure gold adorned with two twisting spires resembling bull's horns. Look at Estella. I caught my mother's eye. She gave me a consp uh, conspiratorial wink. May Saint Ruick fill you with his Holy Spirit on this day, as he did your ancestors before you. With trembling hands, Grand Wise Man Ignatius lifted the crown off the cushion. I could spot a grey hair still clinging to its inner rim, my father's. May you keep the promises you have made before God and your people. The crown came down on my head. Its heaviness surprised me. By the divine power invested in me, I proclaim you sovereign king of Regia. Arise, King Romus. Stand up, oh my god. I stood, the, I stood, the choir broke into On Shores of Gold, the Regian national anthem. Stop them and make a speech. <laughs> oh god. Um, proceed with the coronation. I decided to proceed without making a speech. Everyone in the crowd bowed their heads as Vina and I made our way down the aisle. I passed my cousin Raiko in the second row. He kept his head down and didn't acknowledge me. As we kept walking, I recognised various other members of Risha's three royal houses, as well as monarchs from distant kingdoms. The entire back row was reserved for the Rombergian royal family and their entourage. I could feel my sister-in-law Beatrice's eyes on me. We reached the end of the hall, where a spiral staircase led to the palace's balcony. I've got to do this part alone. <laughs> Come Vina, let's create your future subjects. <laughs> <laughs> what a statement. My daughter beamed and put her arm through mine. We walked up and up the stairs until we came to a door. I stepped out onto the balcony. The sunlight was so dazzling I was almost blinded. When my eyes adjusted, I regarded the scene below me. Thousands and thousands of people were packed onto the palace grounds, some waving the region flag, others the House of Taurus banner. Just beyond them at the gates, the police easily held back a small pocket of protesters. I made little attention to them. I was focused on the noise of the crowd, an overwhelming roar that gradually occurred into a single chant. Salen, what the hell does that say? Salutenus Axa Regu Novus. Sounds like Latin. All hail the new king. Oh my gold, guys. Oh my gold. We're in. We're finally in. It only took about 30 minutes. <laughs> um, so there's a lot to do. We can click on all of these little information tabs there to, to get something to do. Up here in the, in the top, we've got Authority, budget, and energy. So I assume energy just basically means resources in terms of like gas that we can export, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe energy generally means like how much power you have to power your country. I don't know. Um, budget, again, is how much money we've got available to spend on things. And authority, I assume if we drop to, to near zero or at zero, we just lose. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, we've got some of our cities here. We can click on. We've got just... I assume this is information, actually, not things to do. So I'm going to go through some of these information. So Kingdom of Rumberg. Oh, wow, the map is... Oh. Oh. Where, where is... Oh, they're two separate... They're two separate things. Okay, that made more sense. So open country information. Yep. Kingdom of Rumberg, overwhelmingly. We're friendly with them. Yeah, they're absolutely... GDP world, fourth biggest country in the world. Um. Okay. Let's have a look at their reports. Queen Beatrice and Grace send formal congratulations. Upon returning home from the coronation ceremony, Queen Beatrice Livingston sent an official message of congratulations on both of her, on behalf of both Rumberg and Grace. I assume Grace is like a military alliance. The Guild of Royal Allies for Commercial... Oh, no, it's not. Uh, Royal Allies for Commercial Exchange. She welcomed us to the ranks of the world's remaining monarchs and attached a personal note expressing her sorrow that her sister did not leave to see her coronation. Morellin Prime Minister Alma Sol uh, Sultana sends congratulations. The newly elected Prime Minister of Morella reached out to us after our coronation, sending her best wishes and desire to work more closely together, especially on matters regarding the Meftium International Trade Zone. What is this? Globally significant economic cooperative established in 1916 in the Republic of Morella. Gold mining. Um, uh, Muadian port. Okay. 
A trading alliance. Fascinating. Supreme Wiseman Asmo sends congratulations. Very, very nice. This is a very religious guy. Um, Hubertus Taurus appointed acting Duke of Valenciris with the governing seat of Monkis open after our ascension to the throne. It was decided that our cousin Hubertus, the closest Taurus relative living in the province, would assume the position until if and when Princess Vina is appointed Duchess. In a private message, he sent his assurance that he and his family would remain servants of the king. Coronation honoured at Camp Domus. To mark our coronation, Acting War and Security Council Duchess Lucita Azaro, together with the head of armed forces Carlos Ro uh, Robles Azaro, led the military forces in Camp Domus in special exercises. Most other high-ranking members of House Azaro were present at the festivities, with the exception of General Tadius, who remains in hospital after suffering a stroke. Oh, goodness. Um, more congratulations. Duke Reinhardt sends his well wishes. Duke Reinhardt, Reinhardt of pa uh, Palace. Queen Beatrice and yeah okay so I think that is all the information they're all the like the, the letters that we've got so let's scroll back over got some I thought that was a war medal then okay so we actually can ah so we actually can put stuff down royal gold bar yeah let's get that on the table come on son um how do I actually put down my royal gold bar I want I want to put this down come on Oh, my gold bar. Look how delicious and delightful it is. Okay. Um, so, who's this? This is Lesbia up here. This is the big nation. Uh, if we look at Lesbia, unfriendly, overwhelming, they're the fifth. So, actually, they're very, very strong. Kingdom of region here. We've got uh, Wellen here. Okay, they're the ones we're not very friendly with. Oh, no, they are friendly with us. Oh, sorry. We're in an alliance with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in an alliance with them. Um... They're quite small though, only 17 million. We've got them to win next to Morella and the Grand Duchy of Pal uh, Palace. So, these are the ones we had a war with. And we can see we're neutral with them now. They've actually got a strong military, apparently. Um, okay, let's get, we'll ignore all that. Let's just go and get some of these, um, some of these things done. Oh, current policies. Okay, oh god, there's loads of different things. Situations. Small region fleet, heavy reliance on foreign equipment. Mm, okay, warning, waning combat experience. So we've got terrible stuff going on in the military of just not enough uh, capa uh, capacity or experience. Bombers. Mobile force, okay. Large Mountaineer Corp is good. Monarchist fighting traditions, okay. So... Economy. Okay, so we can read about all of these. I don't think I'm too interested in reading about every single one of these. Um, I'd rather just get on with the, the actual missions we've currently got and then deal with these as they come up. So, here yeah, we've got two things. Early morning at Palace Resna or the coronation. Let's let's decide here. So, the region public is eager to celebrate their new king's coronation. Investing in lavish celebrations could make a good first impression and earn their favour. Hmm... So, definitely not the small. Ooh, but we've only got six budgets. So if you use two budget on this, we get an authority, but it's like, whew, that's a lot. Oh, but look, so we're getting this per turn. We're getting uh, five authority per turn from Monarch Romus Taurus. We just get, get it anyway. Budget, we're getting three per turn. Um, Grace trade, base income tax, Mitch revenue, R RG revenue. Okay, and energy... Hey, fascinating. So, I'm going to go for a parade. Just a parade, nothing crazy. Oh, that's actually given us updated to... That's yeah, That's giving us... I think it's... So, we've got up... We're now allied with Rumberg, not just friendly. We're now unfriendly with Palace. How has that happened? Why are we suddenly unfriendly with them? Um, and we're now neutral with Lesbia. So, we've gone from... That's very strange. Why is having a parade made them unfriendly? Whatever. Whatever. Early morning at Palace Resna. The morning after my coronation, I was woken up by a knock on the door. It took me a few seconds to remember where I was. The royal bedroom on the top floor of the residential wing of Palace Resna made the one in Taurus Palace in Monkeys look shabby. All that gold trim covered the walls. I was alone in the bed that could easily have slept for. The knocking on the door continued. Go away, I'm sleeping. Who is it? Door swung open. Pabble walked in beaming. 
The Papal is a head butler to the King of Risha. Okay. After I'd left for Monkeys, my friend had worked his way up to ch Chief Butler. It was hard to believe he was now head of my royal household. Rise and shine, your majesty. I don't know how to do it, like a, a southern star voice there. Um, it's good to see you, Fabul. Uh, what a nerve. Where's my newspaper? Good to see you, Fabul. You too. He drew back the heavy velvet curtains. Sunshine flooded the room. Roma's Taurus, King of Regia, you've come a long way since we were kids. So have you, Mr. Chief Butler. Not bad for the groundskeeper's son, of course. It helped to have friends in high places. He looked me in the eyes. Forgive me if I'm overstepping, but how are you doing? Losing your father must have been hard for you. I think, I think it's complicated. There's, there's no should. You feel what you feel. He opened the doors of my arm, armoire, oh, I don't know what the hell that is, and began pulling out items of clothing. You have quite the packed schedule this morning. Why don't you eat breakfast with the girls while I get your outfit ready? That sounds great. Queen Mother Estella and Princess Vina must be waiting already. You should get a move on. Don't worry, Your Majesty. I'll make sure you're the best dressed king in region history. Oh, thank you very much. Um... Even more fashionable than King Darius the Debonair. Um, he grinned. I'll do my best. I haven't forgotten. Bimere volu un... I can't read the bloody Latin, I can't lie. Uh, I recognise the slogan we made up as kids. Two tides rise, one sun sets. Um, thanks, Fabble. Let's catch up later. Enjoy your breakfast. Sitting in my dressing gown, I headed downstairs. In the eastern dining room, an enormous breakfast spread had been laid out. My mother was already sitting at the table, digging a spoon into a single grapefruit half. It must have God, this I need to do a playthrough where I just play the, the most dickhead of a king ever. Every like opportunity to speak, I just always go with the worst one. I need to do it. If if the series does well, or even if I just really enjoy this game and I want to play it again, <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna do. Good morning, mother. Same to you, darling. <laughs> oh God, I know that voice I shouldn't do. Uh, despite the early hour, my mother was already in her full makeup. She dabbed her lips with her napkin. I hope you're satisfied with yesterday's coronation. Your father wasn't nearly as well attended. Can I say, my people love me. Um, um, that's only because of the TV cameras. Oh, don't sell yourself short. What did he say to you before he died, by the way? I never asked. But, um, yeah, only with number two. He must have he must have been talking about Zile and Palace, his great follies. It's a pity he didn't live to preside over my homeland's big return to Risha, but soon you will. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with this one. I'm looking forward to that day. But don't let my nattering on you keep from eating. King needs energy. She handed me a Rosetta, the traditional rice and quince custard tart. The crust was exceptionally flaky. Just then, Vina came bounding down the stairs. Isn't it a lovely morning? My daughter kissed mother on the cheek, then gave me a shy wave. I nearly got lost on the way here, Grandma. Why didn't you tell me this place is such a big library? Because I didn't want you to hold up in there all the time. Our grandmother's got to see her granddaughter every so often, you know. Vina eagerly took a plate and started piling it high with pastries. Mother clicked her tongue disapprovingly. Not too many of those. The sweeter the taste, the wider the waste. Don't you agree, Romus? Hmm. Hmm. Oh god, I, I want to just go with something normal, but the answer to be either extremely extreme or well Hmm. I'm gonna say this. Vina took a bite of a rosetta and gave an exaggerated sigh of pleasure. Mother rolled her eyes. Suit yourself. Now, if anyone in this place could make a halfway decent strudel, that would be worth ruining one's figure for. We ate for a while in silence. Vina looked lost in thought. Finally, she spoke up. Father, I wanted to ask you something. You know that I'm 18 now. Um. Yes, and. Um. 
It's hard to say he's added more responsibilities. Um, I think where, where to study. I mean, that's the most sensible one. That's not quite, that's not quite what I had in mind. I was thinking I'm old enough to accompany you to your council meetings. It's unusual for a female heir to join the council, I know. But didn't you do the same when you were my age? Hmm. Hmm. I think I'd, yeah. I think you got, if you've got an interest, it might be, it might be worth it. Lies of the Great. It's a huge legacy for me to live up to. Hmm. Greatness is something you're born with. Oh gosh, um, I think I think this first option is quite sweet. That's very kind of you, father. But Liza was the most beloved queen in our history. Of course, people will compare me to her. You're getting ahead of yourself, sweetheart. The crown is on your father's head right now, not yours. What your father needs is for your lovely little face to be seen at balls and ribbon cutting ceremonies, not hidden behind council doors. Hmm. Hmm. Oh gosh, this is a. Uh, I need to redo this a little bit more properly. Um. I think this bottom one is is the best one to say actually. Going to balls won't teach me how to how how degrees are made or how to negotiate with foreign leaders. Only time served in the council will do that. You want to spend the best of your years of your life cooped up in the den of snakes? The council isn't some wise, all-knowing entity. Everyone on it is only looking after their own house and their own stature. And God help you if you get in the way of either of those. Hmm. Gosh. A quite a strong answer, so I'm not sure if they come back to bite me in the ass. But my father may have allowed his counts to run rough, rough shot over him. I will not make that mistake. Getting a getting a bit uh, feisty with the other dukes might cut my reign short, but let's go for that option. Navigating the council's self interest will be part of my future duties. I need to learn how to do that too. I promise it will be like I'm not even there, and I'll step out in public as much as I can. He then looked at me with pleading eyes. Um. I, I, I think she can join because she can then, um, she's supposed to then become the, she's supposed to become the Duke of, um, oh, what the hell was that place called? Volantis or whatever the hell the, the, the Duke, the Duchy we just came from is. So she needs to have some skill to rule, to rule that place. And then if she does become a queen later on, you know, that's, that's the, I might still be alive. Well, actually, they do say you're supposed to take the job until you die, but thank you. I can't wait to start. Oh, I'd better refresh myself on region laws. She pushed her plate away and dashed back up the stairs. Once she was gone, my mother lit a cigarette. You do realise that she'll be nothing but a liability to you in that room. Um. I think, yeah, I think this one's a good. She's the heir apparent. It'd be good education for her. I hope you're right. The clock struck quarter to nine. My first council meeting was starting soon. I excused myself from the table. As I was leaving the dining room, my mother cleared her throat. He always believed you'd make a good king, you know, even if he didn't always show it. Hmm. Thanks for saying that. I did back upstairs to fetch Vina. It was almost time to go. Okay, guys, so we've got a few more information events pop up here. I'm not sure what these little bright lights are. I think it's because it's maybe telling me that like, there's someone... Yeah, Vina Taurus. So just... Tell me there's a new character we can read about. Okay, and then the ones here... I think they're telling me about important stuff with my nation. Okay, so we've got some reports coming. So I have actually read um, the overview section here. It's just a lot of, there's a lot of good. We've got good transport networks. For example, we've got pretty decent international ties um, with the military. We have got, if we have a quick look here, we've got, you know, uh, very, very small actually. Um, but it's saying we've just got, we're lacking a few aspects. There's nothing cripplingly wrong going on in the country so far it's just you know there's a, a pro nationalist movement that's sort of forming and working its way up bad worker rights the economy side uh, we, you know bad tourism yeah nothing crippling though so let's read some of these events valenkir read the report 
Baron and Baroness of Valenkir reaffirm loyalty after absence. Security forces were dispatched to the estate of Lord and Lady Julia and Octavia Taurus, following their conspicuous absence from our coronation. In the past, the couple was suspected of spreading false rumours discrediting King Valerio's claim to the throne. However, they testified that their absence was due to a bout of food poisoning from properly prepared shellfish and enthusiastically reaffirmed their fealty to King Romus and his family. Okay. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. 1950 to be an exceptional wine year. The Cantuava family vi uh, vineyard in Calus has begun bottling its latest batch of Cavill, the first to follow last year's record harvest. They have named it Romos the Red, claim 1950 will go, will go down in history as an exceptional year for Rigian wine. That is, um, that is just delicious, isn't it? Um, finally, we've got two big things here. Read the report. House of Delegates hold first allegiance ceremony. The occasion of the first region coronation since the founding of the House of Delegates, Majority Leader Dario de, de Rava um, okay, uh, called a special se session when members took an oath of allegiance to the Crown. Each parliamentarian was asked to stand and affirm his or her commitment to serve under King Romus's reign with dedication and integrity. Okay, nothing too crazy there. We've now got our next little event. The stairway to the Royal Council Chambers was longer than I remembered. I took a moment to catch my breath in front of the carved oak doors. Hurry up, father. It's not very kingly of you to be late. True king is never late. It's the others who are early. <laughs> um, mm. Ooh. Just give me a second. After collecting my thoughts, I pushed open the door and walked in. Everything was just as it had been in my youth. The high dome ceiling with a skylight that shone into the center of the room. The oval mahogany table. The tall, backed red velvet chair where my father used to sit. My su slight surprise, the room was empty except for one man, my uncle. When Hugo saw me, he sprang to his feet. Romus, my boy. Um, embrace him. I think that's a, we could try and at least bring back some relation to him. We don't want this guy uh, getting angry with us. We'll meet everyone else soon enough, but I thought a private chat with your Grand Vizier would be in order first. His eyes travelled to the doorway where Vida was still standing. Although it seems he won't be as private as I was expecting. Are you staying, Princess Vina? My daughter gave a sh uh, shy nod. Yes, Uncle Hugo. I'm sitting in on the council's meetings. Um. I think. I think that's yeah. That, that's that's the best one to go for. Hugo frowned as he processed this new information, then broke into a smile. Yeah, I think I think this guy's uh. I don't want to say quite false, but I, I think he's it's all sun and shine with him but really he's uh plotting my downfall my as i keep going on whatever but what means then your highness to have a seat Vina walks over to the table as i made my way to the red velvet chair once we were all seated i turned to my uncle um how have you been busy managing the royal transition is a full-time job in itself between that and visits to Raiko and easier i haven't had a day off since the funeral as so I listened to him, my eyes drifted towards the, the back wall. It was covered in portraits of Regia's previous kings, included a newly painted pit likeness of my father. My dear brother, I do miss him, but I dare say it's time we had some fresh blood on the throne. It has been quite some time since you last, you last sat in these chambers. I'll provide an overview for you. Would you like to hear it? Please. As a king, you're both Regia's head of state and commander of its armed forces, as well as the de jure governor of Regia Imperi, Belenkiris, the Pellas, administrative district, and the island of uh, Kalakabiz. Like your father and grandmother before you, you alone have the power to shape this country by passing royal decrees. As in tradition, over hundreds of years, each new ruler has passed a sovereign transition and clemency decree to start their reign. The kingdom will be expecting your decree very soon. Hmm... Hey, let me have a read of these guys. The decree will play a significant role in my reign. It won't be just symbolic gestures, but tools to shape the future. That's what I want to go for. Wield this power wisely, Romus. The decree you issue should strengthen the fabric of our kingdom, not tear it. You go reach for a neatly rolled parchment lying on the grand table. With a deliberate, uh, deliberate movement, he unrolled it, revealing the prepared royal decree. The intricate script and the seal of Regia was glinting under the chandelier's light. I and the rest of the Royal Council advise you to be to the best of our ability and put forth decrees and state decisions for your approval. Ultimately, the King has the final say. However, 
should not neglect the House of Delegates. The The Legislative Assembly, my brother, set up to appease the opposition after the uprising. Hmm. That is a terrible move. Um, that's right, it's Theatre of Puppets. Uh, what about it? It still works the way he intended. Regia has the appearance of a constitutional democracy, while power remains firmly in the hands of the king. His Majesty Valera presided over the last elections in 1949. The Regia National Coalition secured a house majority as always. They proposed decrees and official approvals or disapprovals of the laws passed by you and the council. And as Grand Vizier, it's traditional for me to attend their sessions, pass any relevant information on to you. Um, sounds like a waste of time. <laughs> that does sound like a waste of time, to be honest, but um, I'm gonna, I want to get him on my side. Let's say stuff like that. Of course, Your Majesty. With that said, I would advise you take to the delegates input into account. No good can come of ignoring the will of the people. Um... Oh god, all better beheaded. Oh gosh. Thank you for letting me know. I'll be sure to listen to them going forward. I'm here to serve, Your Majesty. Fortunately, the delegate speaker, Daria Dereva, is a Taurus loyalist through and through. She should give you no trouble. Especially the opposition is small but worth keeping an eye on, especially the new leader, Manus Sazon. Oh, okay, one of the other leaders. You will give me a meaningful look. Oh yeah. Manus Sazon have to be joking. I wish that I were. As you know, Duke Lucas Sazon was executed for his role in your kidnapping and the 1926 uprising, while his wife Angelica was sent into exile. While she remains under strict orders not to leave the island, no such restrictions were placed on the son she gave birth to shortly after her arrival. He opened a folder and took out a picture of the clean-cut young man. Bina leaned forward to peer at it. Upon finishing his studies in Kairut, Manus report returned to the mainland and proceeded to win the largest supporter base of any opposition leader we've seen thus far. His promises to give a voice to the common man seem to be resonating with the populace. Part of it, at least. Hmm. Common man, he's descended from nobility. Um, you're right, we have to be wary of him. We will. Go we'll close the folder. While I'm on the subject, a word about our houses. House Taurus. Family currently controls the province of Alenkiris as well as the city state of Isa. How's Van Clear's doing? Yeah. Stable as always. With you on the throne, me as Grand Vizier and Rico in Isa, the governing seat has been filled by Hubertus, a distant cousin of ours. Of course, Princess Vina is eligible to take up his place as the reigning Duchess. In a few years, maybe. I still don't feel ready. You're gone when I tell you this guy, oh my gosh. Um, uh, thank you, Father. You have tapped his fingers on the table. In any case, Your Majesty, I don't expect any trouble in Valenkiris during your reign. It remains the wealthiest of Risha's provinces and the least affected by crime. Keep their lives comfortable, and the locals there will stay loyal to you. Hmm. Hugo's face hardened. Isa has been difficult since the Sazon Rebellion, even more so now that the native regions are in danger of being crowded out by migrants. He spat out the last words with some distaste. Considering the circumstances, I believe my son is doing just fine. Hmm. I'll find a way to help him out. Would be most kind of you. Yes, Port Drazon and its metropolitan area are controlled by the central government and therefore House Taras. You don't need to worry about pleasing our house in this re region, though. It's more crucial to retain the favour of the major corporations that are based here. Um. Yeah, doesn't House Taurus run any corporations? Some minor relations do, but our, most of our houses' wealth comes from our land and natural gas holdings. The Palace Administrative District is also under the jurisdiction of Rizia Imperi since we reclaimed it in the early 20s. Okay, as for the other houses, House Sazon. Yes, aside from Isa, which is now under Raiko's governance, all of Brenas is still their territory. The nobles swore fealty to the crown in exchange for keeping a hold on the cities and their estates. 
But the return of Angelica's boy could test that loyalty. He is the rightful duke after all. Mm. Yeah, I'm not happy with these people to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think this is the right option. At the moment, they're the weakest of the three houses. You do well to ensure they stay that way. Lest we forget, Wellen is scheduled to return Zilli to Regia next year. The Sazons expect the region to become part of their province, as it was before the uprising. Oh, so yeah, we gave that port to them, didn't we? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, maybe a bargaining chip. Yeah, well, we could have a, an, an uprising on our hands if, if you know, if, if they um don't get it back. So it's it's hard to balance. Now you're thinking like a king. And finally, Al Cesaro. Azaro. Precisely, the rulers are of Cardes Monteclar and the stewards of the region military. You must be aware of the patriarch Tadius. Tadius's poor health. The general suffered a stroke shortly after King Valero's death. Uh, yes, a shame I never got to know him. His daughter, Lucita, the Duchess of Monteclar, volunteered to take his place as war and security counsellor. You'll meet her soon. You should also know that the factions within our province have begun calling for the return of Palace again. Mm. Ooh. Oh, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Oh, because I said I wouldn't go to war with them, but I, I I need to have a think. I need to have a think. Um. Uh. Yeah, I, th I think this option for now. No matter your feelings on the subject, I'd advise you to take the house's concerns seriously. Well, I hope that was helpful. One more thing, as you're aware. A few years before your father's death, he reinstated the Golden Guard, an elite unit specifically designated to protect the king or queen. Twelve guards. Okay. Right. Yeah, and where are they now? Here, sir. Ready and able. Titus Gordon. What a name. For the first time, I noticed the man standing in the corner of the room. He was wearing a tight-fitting golden blazer that barely concealed his muscular physique. He, Titus Gordon, captain of the Golden Guard. He and his men have been keeping a close watch on you since the coronation. What the hell? <laughs> um... I'm pleased to meet you, Captain Gordian. Call me Titus, sir. Titus and his dozen men have been trained in the upper echelons of Regia's elite military and police academies. Each has sworn an oath to protect the king and his family at all costs. Hmm. Great, looking forward to work with them. Yeah, I don't see any downside to them. Uh, apart from the fact they could be like Julius Caesar's moment and they just all kill me, but I, I, I highly doubt that. It's an honour, your majesty. He bowed to Vina. She looked a little flustered. But didn't Queen Liza discontinue the Golden Guard? Because she thought they made roles look elitist and because... He trailed off. Because she thought they were getting too powerful. It's why our current force is less than a third of the size it once was. Your father's always had a fondness for recent tradition, so he spared no expense in bringing the Guard back, albeit in a reduced form. Um, you and your men better stay in line, Captain. Um... um I, I, ooh, I think that's a bit arrogant, but let's go for that one. I won't let you down, sir. Thank you, Titus. You may wait outside the chambers until this meeting's conclusion. Noon already. Shall we and the young heiress break for a glass of wine before the council con convenes this afternoon? Um, I'm not superior now. Oh my god. Right, gladly. We'll have much to catch up on. Brilliant. Let's, let's go for some, some drinks. I think your father kept a store of vintage Cantuavo in one of these cabinets. Thank you for the invitation, Uncle Hugo. And to look at my daughter in the eye. What an intelligent and well-mannered young woman you've grown up to be, your highness. You know how overwhelming the capital can seem compared to Monkeys. If you ever have questions, don't be afraid to come to me. That's very kind, Uncle Hugo. Yes, too kind. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, let, let's say this one. What is my role as Grand Vizier, if not to advise the royal family? Vina finished jotting down some notes as Hugo went s searching for the wine. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these other things. Decree available, decree available, decree available. So we've got three decisions we can make there, guys. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. But. I'm 
wanted to end the episode there. Yes, I know this episode was really about just getting the um, getting the start done, getting the the prologue read and uh, set up, and meeting some of the main characters that we're going to be uh, playing alongside. So not too much has actually happened in terms of making decrees. But you'll have to watch episode two for that, won't you? So. If you're still watching now, thanks a million for supporting the channel. Uh, please do make sure to give it a like if you did enjoy, and subscribe if you do want to follow me for the whole adventure of this Kingdom of Regia playthrough series. So yeah guys, I will see you in episode 2, where we shall discover what's in store for the king. Alright guys.